Hello, 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 everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa Silhouettes, Bar for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart, teaching creators and crafters how to paint for fun and profit, and encouraging joy through art. Hello, 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 everyone. So, you guys, I'm just going to throw a comment in here so I can follow comments. Um, like I said, I am Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art. This is my first time presenting live here, you guys. It's funny how things, um, come together when they're supposed to come together. I'd like to thank Tara. Tara, I believe, runs this group. And, uh, her and I are in other groups together. And we finally connected. And here I am. So, as you guys know, it is Butterfly Month. We are doing some Butterfly Bingo. And we are sharing some butterfly, 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 butterfly art with you guys. So earlier today, um, I shared a tracer. It is only the butterfly. Um, the tracer will stay here as this video will stay here. You guys can paint at your leisure. Like I said, this is my first time here. So um, bear with me, but you guys will get to know me as I paint along. I do have my colors out. So I have... Um, Royal Blue, Diazonine Purple, Ink Spot. So I wanted three values of blue. I have a very bright yellow. I think it's um, primary yellow. And then I have, where is it? This one, uh, Moon Yellow, which is a little bit more of a golden yellow. Then I have some black and white and a bright red. This is apple red, but you can use um, whatever red you want. And then two values of green. For my green, I'm using Thicket and citrus green okay so we will get started i have my tracer out i'm going to turn my camera around and we will chit chat while i get started so i um use this 9 by 12 pad a lot of times i have a lot of art going on in here oh my back came off so lots of stuff in here okay then because i like this pad and sometimes when you paint it kind of like messes up the rest of your pages. I found this piece of plastic. I think it came with a picture frame. I don't remember. But I slip it in between the page I'm working on and the next page. It cut a little bit bigger. So I'm not messing up all the edges of the rest of my book. Okay. Then I'm going to take my butterfly and I'm just going to eyeball it up. So once you guys, you guys get to know me a little bit, we'll get to know each other. Um, I'm all about eyeballing. I rarely get out a ruler. Um, I don't, uh, use the exact same colors all the time. I'm about, you know, use whatever you have on hand, use whatever colors you like, use your favorite colors, whatever that is. Um, that's how I roll. Tara knows there is no, um, art police. No art police are going to come bang on your door and tell you you used the wrong color green or the wrong color yellow or you were supposed to paint those um, flowers pink, but you decided to paint them purple. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nope. So it is art. I am the mother of two daughters, 29 and almost 27. And when it came to crafting and um, painting... And being creative, my motto has always been, it's art, it can't be wrong. And that's what I stick to. So anyway, I am tracing just the butterfly on here. This is graphite paper. It has been well used, well worn. Graphite paper will last um, hundreds and hundreds of traces. You don't have to worry about that. It's the easiest way I know there are other methods but it's the easiest way I know to get a tracer onto your surface. There are people that are anti-tracer and that's okay. I am pro tracer and I am pro giving my painters all the tools they need to be successful. You wanna paint, you wanna be creative. Um, if a tracer makes that easier for you, if a stencil makes that easier for you, um, so be it. It is about the process. It is about the journey. It is not necessarily about the outcome. 
Do we want to make pretty things? Of course we want to make pretty things. Everybody wants to make pretty things. But you know what? Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Okay, so I have some brushes. I always, always use a liner brush. This is my favorite liner brush. Can you see it's even curvy and wonky and all chipped up? I can't part with it, you guys. So liner brush, a medium round brush. This is a number 12. You guys might know this already, but brushes are not standard sizes across all brands. Okay, so this is TD Art Supply. I forget where I even got this from. Um, what would be a 12 in this TD Art would be something totally different in a plaid brush or in um, these other brushes that I get wholesale. So you can't really go by sizes. So I basically say about a half inch flat, my favorite liner brush. Um, this is almost, this is a little less than a half inch flat. Maybe, mm, I don't know. It's not a quarter. It's between a quarter and a half. And then a medium round. If I'm doing something bigger, of course, I'm going to have a much, much bigger flat brush. And I have my palette out here. Black and white, pretty much always standard. They're like standard, like salt and pepper. Um, I have three values of yellow, but this is basically primary yellow. This one I just threw out here because I had a little bit left. And this is moon yellow. So I have a bright yellow and then a little bit of a golden yellow. And then I have three different, um, basically blues, but this diazonine, it's more of a purple, but it's a very, very deep blue, very, very deep purple. So it kind of straddles. And then two greens. Okay. So I'm going to start with my blues. And I'm going to, oh, I'm going to put um, this on Do Not Disturb. There we go. And I'm going to get started. I'm going to paint all the background. I want my darkest blues up here. And I'm going to work down. It's going to still be blue. It's a night sky. It's going to still be blue down here, but not as dark. I like to pick up both the values on my brush at once. And then I do like a crisscross we want some texture and I'm going to pick up the dark we want some texture and we want some character to our background this is one of the easiest backgrounds I do um, I'm going to come in here I'm going to come around my butterfly I only go around um, partly you don't want to have like a big line underneath your elements on I mean next to your elements on your pa paper so I will go around now I have that nice border and I will go back to um, putting in my background here so I have been painting for about um, 15 years I find painting creating extremely therapeutic I started out, um, I'm a certified one-stroke decorative painter, and I started out painting um, in, I guess, 2006 when I was uh, getting divorced. Had, you know, that can be um, a very, very difficult time. It happens. But there was adult ed classes at my local high school so I'm like you know what I could use a little me time so I signed up for these adult ed classes for painting it was one stroke painting the woman came from really far away to teach the class and I would just sit in the back and be like la di da di da di da not even caring or worrying about anything it was two hours um, and I just felt like it was therapy for me. I could just sit in the back, mind my own business, and just hang out. And then I started to think, hmm, I kind of like this. And I was like, I'm looking forward to this. So fast forward, I started paying more attention and started loving it. And then, of course, you know, life happens and things change and whatever and so there was a time when I stopped painting for a few years. Not a long time because it wasn't that long, but it was a while. And then 
in 2015 and it's just it's so weird how it happened you guys it's you know like I said I have now joined this group for some reason this group has come to me now everybody says things happen when they're supposed to happen um, whatever but in 2015 a painting online on Facebook that somebody was teaching online caught my eye and this is before I even was interested in Facebook lives had any desire to have a business had any desire to share my art because at the time I was like nobody wants to see my art that's for sure I hadn't painted in a while and then it was a Halloween design just totally caught my eye and I was like oh that's pretty cool we're big into Halloween in this family and I was like I want to paint that so I signed up for this ladies class and painted the Halloween design and loved it and got right back into painting so that was October of 15 now here's where it gets weird you guys by January of 16 my dad who was 88 at the time um, ended up in the hospital he became unable to take care of himself um, me and my brother and my sister had to step up and find him some help and get him some caretaker and oversee his life and his home and his bills and everything and I was so grateful to have my painting to fall back on okay so I've done the background I got the darkest blue oops, I'm gonna fix this up here the darkest blue up top and then I kind of worked my way down to medium blue and then to the lighter blue on the bottom okay oh I need some paper towels so I'm gonna switch to my different brush now to my round brush to do my black so um, my dad needed, you know, a little bit of help, a little bit of attention, a little bit of care, and it's a longer story than that, but my art really helped. It was a very stressful time, um, and my art that I had just taken back up again for some reason, oddly enough, in um, October was there for me. And I was like, whoa, this is weird, but okay. And I was painting, and it just really helped to have my art to escape to and come in and grab my supplies and just be like, la di da di da. Sorry, I had to concentrate. And it was, it was very um, rewarding. I was doing some practicing. I was getting a little better and it was just some me times and downtime we were um, empty nesters at the time which I'm still an empty nester but at the time my girls were in college now they're both um, done with college and out of the house so I'm still an empty nester but at the time they were in college and so it gets weird you guys it gets really weird so my dad ended up um, passing away in May of that year, May 2016. And it was sad, and, but again, you know, and to each his own, whatever. And, you know, I'm not going to get into a whole family history, but my dad was 88, and as sad as it was, um, you know, it happened, whatever. So weird 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 enough my sister who was my older sister at the time well she's always always been my older sister except that now she was stolen away um, started having some weird medical issues weird symptoms we didn't know what was going on with her um, ended up you know doctor appointment after doctor appointment so finally, like, it got, like, 
every day it was getting worse and more bizarre and we thought she had a stroke ended up taking her to um, the emergency room and it wasn't a stroke and it ended up being this very weird rare fatal brain disease and uh, that was it eight weeks later my sister was stolen away from us. Bam. Just like that. And, you know, they say you only live once. And these things, you know, happen. And um, a light bulb goes off. Well, it's true. And that is how I came to then decide to make art a bigger part of my life. Um, share my art I need to look at something share my art with um, others start my art side hustle and just want to bring the same feeling to others that art brought me at the time because if it was not from, and my family was very supportive, every, you know, we were all, we're on the same boat. We were all hurting at the same time. We all lost somebody very dear to us. But, um, and I was grateful for my husband. I was grateful for my children. But art is really what saved me, helped me keep my sanity. And that's how I said, you know what? You only live once. I need to take some time for me. And if there's anybody else out there struggling or um, going through a difficult time or alone and they need a little art, a little respite, a little getaway, and I can provide that, that's what I'm going to do. And so that is my story that's how I came to be and I don't know if I mentioned it but my sister had um, what's called CJD and now I use my page and every chance I get to spread awareness of CJD Crooksville Jakob disease because not enough people know about it including the medical field okay so we have base coded our background I have done the outline of my butterfly. It's a little crooked here. I just want to fix this part of his body a little bit. There we go. All right. So while that dries, I'm going to come in here. Get my flat brush again. And we're going to add a little bit of grass to the bottom of our canvas. Okay. Then let me wipe this off. I'm going to pick up both greens on my brush, the dark and the light. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pull in some grass strokes. Sometimes I have my light going up and then sometimes I turn my brush and I have my dark color going up. When we do our grass, we want it to be kind of thin and we want to crisscross each other as we pull it in up there. So I keep going back to my plate. I kind of want my hair, my brush, my fibers on my brush to be a little bit fixed. We don't want to have a bed head. And so I'll come over here, I'll fix my brush with a little pressure on my plate get my fibers nice and neat, pick up a little bit more paint, and then come back in here and start adding in more of these grassy strokes. And I'm just going to do a few on the bottom. And you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. You can add as much grass as you want. You could even not put grass at all. Again, no art police. Nobody's going to come banging on your door and be like, where's your grass? Your grass is too long. Your grass is too short. I mean, your neighbors might come banging on your door and telling you your actual grass is too long or too short because 
neighbors have gotten really weird these days. But um, no art police. Nobody's going to tell you you're using the wrong color green or the wrong color purple or that your grass is too long or your grass is too short or your grass is too thick or your grass is too thin. Nope. So I'm just working my way. I want to fill up the whole bottom. Not to the point where you're not going to be able to see anything. I like to have the blue shining through. So I'm not going to make it thick. But I'm going to have the grass going across the whole entire bottom. And when I think I need more paint, or when I feel like my strokes are getting too thick like there, then I will go back to my palette and fix my brush. Sometimes it gets to the point where um, you got a little paint buildup on your brush and you wanna just put it in between your paper towels and give it a wipe and then all the globby paint comes off and you have a nice brush again with a nice point. And depending on which part of my brush, the light green or the dark green is facing up, that's what's gonna make my blade of grass darker or lighter. I'm trying not to get any on my butterfly because I still have to go in and add lots to my butterfly. The tricks to butterflies, you guys, butterflies can be any color, any design, um, whatever your heart's content. The only trick to butterflies is, or is our tricks is our, um, butterflies are very symmetrical. So whatever you do to the um, wings on one side, you have to do to the wings on the other side. And that's basically it. And they can be as ornate or as plain as you want them to be. So, okay. If you guys have any questions, I will come back and answer them. So you can just drop them in um, to the uh, comments and I will come back and answer them. Okay. So now I'm going to go into my yellows. I'm picking up this bright yellow and I want to fill it in here. I don't want to go over the black. If you do a little bit, it's fine. But I'm picking up the bright yellow and I'm just filling in with this bright yellow to start with. Okay. And as I work my way down, that's when I'm going to pick up this golden yellow. And I want the bottom part of the wings. And I know I'm going to end up calling them leaves. But I want the bottom part of the wings to be just a little bit deeper and a little bit more golden. Don't worry, if you get little on the black, you can go back in and fix it. The acrylic paints are very forgiving. You can fix anything. Now since I have the dark on my brush, I'm going to continue with the dark up here and start on the bottom of this one and then I will go to the light up top. When you want to blend with acrylic paint, you want everything wet. Your surface, your brush, the paint on the surface, the paint on the brush, the paint that you're adding, you want it all wet, wet on wet. When you want to fix something, enhance something, tweak something, you want it all dry. Okay? So if you are patient and you let your acrylic paint completely dry, you can fix anything. But yes, the trick is to be patient. If you try and fix something and you have wet on wet, you're just going to end up with mud or pink or blue or some kind of blended color. So you always want to wait until your 
um, whatever it is that you want to fix is completely dry and then you can go over it and fix anything. Okay. I mean, if you wanted to leave your butterfly like that right now, you could. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to my liner brush. Now, I will, when you guys get used to me, I tend to jump around. So while one part is drying, I'll work on a different part. While that part's drying, I'll go to a different part. And I will constantly be jumping around. So I'm going to get my liner brush now. I'm going to come in. And I'm going to add a little bit of white highlight. to our butterfly, okay? I'm going to come up here. It does not have to be a continuous line. Nope. I'm just coming in here. I'm following the shape of the butterfly with all these little curves. with my liner brush while I wait for the yellow part of my butterfly to dry. Keep putting my hand in my um, grass. It's so cool to me how you add a little bit of white in here and it totally helps your design whatever it is really pop Oop. and just a little bit of white up there okay oh getting peeing over my arm okay Now I'm going to pick up my light blue. I'm going to stick with my liner brush now. I'm going to pick up my lightest blue, this one, and I'm just going to add in a few little blue parts in here. Okay, and again, remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. It's like yoga. I don't know if anybody's ever taken yoga. But whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. Okay? And I'm going to go back to my black. And I'm going to add in these little, oh, they're almost like tiger stripes. I don't know why it's called a swallowtail butterfly and not a tiger butterfly. But we're going to come in here and I'm going to touch my black. I'm going to give it a little shake, and I want it thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom. So again, and you can put as many of these as you want. I'm just going to do the three like that, and I'm going to try to make them symmetrical. Okay. It's like I said, that is the most important. So that one got a little long. So I'm going to make that one just a little bit longer too. I don't want to go back and forth, back and forth, but I did just want to make that a little bit longer. And now I'll be much more careful with this one. Okay. So there we just have those stripes. And if you wanted to add more, if you wanted to put some on the bottom, you totally can. I'm going to just have those three there and leave them like that, okay? I'm going to clean off that. Now, while my, those are continuing to dry, I'm going to show you guys how I make um, fireflies, okay? So, I'm going to get some of this bright, bright yellow and put it over here. I'm going to get some of my white. 
I'm going to give it a little bit of a mix. Some more white. Okay. There's a night, a summer night sky. And we have fireflies out there. So I'm going to put a dab of this paint that I mixed. Then I'm going to rub it out with my finger. Then I'm going to use the back of my brush and put a little white spot. Okay. Pick up some more yellow paint. I'm going to put a blob of that light yellow paint. I'm going to use my finger to rub it out. I'm going to get some white. I'm going to put a piece, a dab of white in there. And again, I'm going to put a dab of yellow. I'm going to use my finger because you want it to be more transparent on the outside. So you want it to like spread. I'm going to put one up here. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just dabbing in some of this yellow and white I mixed. Then I'm picking up a little bit of white. I'm going to do something. Okay, let me turn this around. Do -do. Move this out of the way. Put that down. Okay. So, I'm going to put one over here. Again, just dab it in. Get my finger. Give it a spread. Get the white. And put a dab. One, two, three, four, five. I think I'm going to put another one. Put one up here. Dab. My finger. And then white. And maybe it's always nice to have odds. Maybe I'll put another one in here. Make that one a little bit smaller. There we go. And then there. That's what do you guys think so far? Cute, right? Okay, now I'm going to get this black paint again, and I'm just going to come in here and very, very easily, I want to put in some more detail into our butterfly. And you guys, you will see, I am always, always, always moving my paper around. I hardly ever or never use an easel. I would just rather move it around and around and around. Okay. I'm going to come up here. And this is very, very light, you guys. I'm hardly even touching the paper at all. If you wanted to do this with a paint pen, you totally can. I like to use the liner brush. I like to use the liner brush as much as I possibly can. Okay. And then we're just going to take, and I want to just pull a little bit of some segment out there. Almost like the veins, I guess, in the um, wings. And again, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. They're totally symmetrical. And you can make this as detailed as you want. Okay. 
And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to get a tiny bit of red. I'm not even going to put it out. What kind of paper? Hello, Susie Combs. It's nice to see you. Love the contrast. Thank you. Yes. Isn't that so cool? Um, this is, and I don't, I, well, I can't show you the cover because I painted, oh, my cover popped off. I painted the cover. This was the cover. So I painted the cover. But this is, I have a different size one here. This is a 9 by 12 um, art book. And this is not what it is. It's called Bristol Board. It has to have a blue cover. It's called Bristol Board. I think it's Strathmore. And this is a um, little one. This is five by five and a half by eight and a half. But this is a nine by twelve. Um, it, they're Bristol Board canvas sheets. And then I put this piece of plastic in here to protect the rest of my sheets because you know when you paint and you paint on the edge, it kind of like gets everything yucky. So I found this piece of plastic. It was from a picture frame or something. And so I use it in here to protect the next pages. And there you go. Because you know, I know you paint, Susie Combs. We have, um, what do you call it? Canvases and woods and art and all kinds of stuff everywhere. Okay, so I'm not even going to put any um, red out. I'm just going to get a little bit of red right from my cap. And I'm going to put red here and red here and then up for the eyes and that is it so you can go in and maybe I'll add a few you can go in and put in um, some stars if you want and I do this with the back of the brush. You could use um, the toothbrush method. And really, the only difference between stars and snow is that your painting will look like a winter painting or a night sky painting. Otherwise, they're basically the same. So I'm just using the back of my brush. When I come down further, I try to be less um, forceful with the dots so the stars down here on the horizon look a little bit smaller um, but when I'm up here I'm doing them big and uh, that is it so let me turn you guys around so thank you thank you thank you here's my swallowtail butterfly if you guys paint it I'd be nice if you guys tag me or um, do hashtag Teresa's art spot I would love to see that and um, thank you. So this is great, you guys. I loved being here for my first time in the online paint party um, group. Thank you for having me. And there's some other things. Um, this is going around the interweb right now, so you guys might have seen it. Or if you're in paint party headquarters, a lot of you here might be in paint party headquarters. I painted those this week. So fun. I can't wait to be offering them up for classes. So, Susie. The whole thing is on here, all the colors that I used, I named them all, they're on here, and I, I posted the tracer today. The tracer is only the butterfly, but that's all you really need. Show you how to do the grass on the bottom. And thank you, so anybody else, if you're watching this in a replay, put hashtag replay, and if you have any questions, um, I will come back and answer them. Thank you everyone, have a great night and a wonderful weekend.